Hello friends. I'm sitting comfortably at home, browsing the collected papers of Bernard Riemann, especially the paper presented in 1859 to the Academy of Sciences in Berlin, entitled On the Number of Prime Numbers Less Than a Given Magnitude. This paper is the origin of the Riemann hypothesis. Since then, the greatest unsolved problem in mathematics. These days, it has become more current than ever. Why? By the announcement that the mathematician Sir Michael Atiyya had presented the solution to it at the Heidelberg Laureate Forum, HLF. I have prepared this extra chapter to commend, for its actuality, the proof presented by Sir Michael Atiyya last Monday, September 24, 2018. This chapter is between chapters 2 and 3 of the series of videos dedicated to the Riemann hypothesis, and I take this opportunity to remind you that you can subscribe to my channel entitled The Riemann Hypothesis and the secret of prime numbers. Well, in spite of the multiple technical problems in the HLF video streaming, everyone interested in the Atiyah conference could see his dissertation. The first thing that surprised me was that Mr. Atiyah dedicated practically all the time, a total of 45 minutes, to introduce the Riemann hypothesis, making a historical tour and he only dedicated a few minutes to presenting what, for him, was the proof of this problem. Sir Michael Atiyah, born in Hampstead in 1929, is an excellent mathematician, although certainly somewhat old. In internet you will find all the information of interest about his career, developed almost all in Britain with the stays of some years in the United States. He has the two most important awards that a mathematician can receive. The Fields Medal, awarded in 1966, and the Abel Prize in 2004, jointly with Isador Singer. He has many honors and medals, such as the Copley Medal and the Benjamin Franklin Medal and a lot of published papers. Therefore, Sir Michael Atiyah is considered one of the great mathematicians of the 20th century. Of course, when a mathematician of this prestige announced that he is going to present a proof of the Riemann hypothesis, we must attend to what he says with the greatest interest and expectation. And if the way to announce it is through the expression simple proof, with even greater interest. Everything presented by a great mathematician, even if it leads to erroneous conclusions, deserves great respect, because it means a high-level work which can even open doors to new discoveries. The first thing I will say is that the claim proof presented by Atiyya does not seem to have dazzled the mathematical community. It does not seem to have aroused much interest. The way he made the presentation moves away from the protocols that mathematicians like. The paper associated with the presentation, not yet published, is not adapted to the standards, but there is a certain poetic, historical tone and even sentimental language. Another curious aspect is the framework of the presentation of the claim proof. The HLF is not a usual mathematical congress, in which there is a committee that can vet the papers presented. It is a networking forum in which prestigious mathematicians give lectures to new generations about their own or others' events in order to create a stimulus. Therefore, it is a congress far from what may be the presentation 
of a great mathematical discovery, of which nothing was previously known. So, before entering into the background of the proof, we are already in a strange situation. The Athea's claim proof is a proof by contradiction. The Riemann hypothesis, we will see this in detail through the chapters of my channel, says that all non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are aligned in the complex plane in a vertical line with real part one half. Well, what Adige does is to suppose that there is a zero outside that line, and after a confused exposition, he defends that he arrives at a contradiction, using somewhat strange entities called thought functions. In fact, Atiyah presented the core of the proof on a single slide. In that slide, he bases his proof referring to another paper presented to the Royal Society, but not yet published. He bases his proof on some little known and confused entities called thought functions. The properties of these functions, functions of infinite polynomials, after the British mathematicians John Todd, are not well known, but Atiya works with them as if everything were clear, leaving many things in the air. He mixes two results from his previous works on the fine structure constant, a dimensionless physical constant associated with the force of electromagnetic interaction between particles. These works also have somewhat lack of rigor, as said by mathematicians. The presentations of Atiyah contain several errors that can be considered as typographical, although they could also be considered as misleading or inconsistencies. The forums and magazines specialized in mathematics on the Internet are, in general, skeptical. They qualify the claim proof as vague, inconsistent, or simply wrong. Now, Atiyah's paper should be published in a prestigious magazine after a meticulous and slow examination of mathematicians. That will be done if there are mathematicians interested in doing so. They are not obligated. An examination that can take months or years if the proof is potentially correct. If it is wrong, as it seems to be, it will be filed in the folder of failed attempts to prove the Riemann hypothesis, which already has some size. Therefore, the price of $1 million that the Clay Mathematics Institute has reserved is expected to wait. It does not seem that this is the occasion on which such a price will be awarded. Almost 160 years have passed since 1859 and the Riemann hypothesis remains the most interesting unsolved mathematical problem. This is a serious channel. In all the content of my videos, I will not say that the Riemann hypothesis is proven. To this day, officially, it is not. I am just a chronicler. In any chapter, I will say whether or not the hypothesis is close to being proven. Although I am very curious and have knowledge in mathematics, I have no idea how to approach a proof or personally I do not feel qualified to elucidate the quality of work like that of Atiyah. Therefore, dear viewer, the content of these videos is full of very interesting things, but do not expect me to dare to say if the Rima hypothesis is true or false. When I read the opinions about Atiyah's presentation, especially in newspapers and non-mathematical magazines, I am surprised how frivolity or speculation arise. In some media, it is said that if the Riemann hypothesis were proven, the data encryption algorithms would be jeopardized, especially in the Internet, mobile communications, and in all banking transactions. There is talk 
of a kind of digital debacle. Well, this is simply not true. The Rima hypothesis, if it were to be proven, and as we will see in the next chapters of the channel, would make us see the light on how the prime numbers are distributed among the natural numbers. Today is a matter that is not known perfectly. On the other side, the data encryption algorithms are based on the prime factorization of very large numbers. The proof of the hypothesis will not tell us anything about how this factorization can be done. In fact, we can't already live on the assumption that the hypothesis is true and nothing happens. Or we can live on the assumption that it is false and nothing happens either. Only in the case that the Rima hypothesis proof was based on previously discovering how we can factorize very large numbers, which is quite unlikely because it involves two different problems, could appear security problems in data encryption. But the matter is easier. There are already many mathematicians trying to find out how big numbers are factorized into prime numbers, and for that you do not have to prove the Riemann hypothesis. But as such a thing is a mystery, it is very doubtful that there will be any progress. And computers do not help us. Because getting the prime factors of a certainly large number can take many years, even centuries. Moreover, also there are many mathematicians searching for more powerful encryption algorithms. At this time, the security based on the prime numbers enjoys excellent health. The importance of the Riemann hypothesis is more mathematical than practical. According to Peter Sarnak, there are about 500 mathematical theorems that begin like this. If the Riemann hypothesis is true, then... So, if it is proven, these 500 theorems will be proven at once, which is unsuspected in mathematics. And if the Riemann hypothesis is false, then those theorems will also be false. If someday we know that the Riemann hypothesis is true, then we will say that the prime numbers are distributed among natural numbers in the most possible balanced way, and many other things of mathematical importance. And we will have a way of calculating the distribution, but today we cannot say it. Here ends this extra chapter. We cannot advance more. We now return to our quiet ride on the Riemann hypothesis and the prime numbers. Each time we will know more, step by step, until we understand what nowadays is the greatest unsolved problem in mathematics. Thank you for viewing. See you in the next chapter, chapter 3 of this collection of videos.